the 75 day challenge. We have seen some amazing results for some of you and it's going to help you become healthy. It's gonna help you become wealthy and it's gonna help you become wise. This is the way to do it. Let's get into it. Now today, we are gonna be doing my favorite thing to do every single year, which is the 75 day challenge. And every year we try to tweak this challenge slightly so that for most of us, we can really get ahead with our money once the new year comes around. Now, this is a really, really powerful thing that a lot of you have done year over year. This is our third year doing the 75 day challenge. And it is one that we have seen some amazing results for some of you that actually go through the 75 day challenge. And for a lot of folks, if you've never gotten your money right, you've never really gotten into that rhythm of getting your money down to the nitty gritty and making sure you start to develop the correct habits with your money, this is the way to do it. We go with 75 days in a row of a bunch of us doing it all together where we are trying to make sure that we are putting the right habits in place so we start off 2024 with our money going in the right direction now this is not only a money challenge this is a challenge that is modeled after 75 hard from andy frisella and if you've never heard of 75 hard it is a really labor intensive system so we've made it a little bit easier we combined it with fitness and money both together but we want you to kind of start your year off right and start it in the right direction. And so I'm going to go through this and show you exactly how it works. Now, we also have a printable for the 75 day challenge and a calendar that's absolutely free. Uh, and so if you go to mastermoney.co slash resources, you'll be able to find that it is also going to be linked up down in the show notes below so that you can check it out that way. Now, one thing to note also is with the 75 day challenge, you are always welcome to do this over and over and over again throughout the year. Some people do it throughout the entire year, and then other people decide to just do it to start off their year so they can start off on the right foot and get those habits into place. But you can do this as many times in a row as you want to. This is not a set it and forget it thing, but you can do it as much as you want, and it's going to help you become healthy. It's going to help you become wealthy, and it's going to help you become wise. And those three areas are the areas that I want you to be working in. For a lot of folks, we start this at the new year because those are three of the areas that they really want to master and get down. So this is how the 75-day challenge is going to work. I'm going to go through the rules throughout this episode so that you can understand how it works and see if it's something that you want to do. But most of you, every single year when we do this, we love it. We've added a few things to it. We re removed a couple other things from it so that we can make Make this the best 75 day challenge as of yet. So really, really pumped up for this episode. Let's get into it. All right. So the first thing you're going to do at the beginning of the challenge, and this is really, really important to make sure that you are accomplishing what you want to accomplish during this challenge is I want you to review and create financial goals for the next year. So if you did the 75 day challenge last year, review your goals over the course of the last year, and then we're going to create new financial goals over this time frame. Now, this is exactly how you create goals with your money. And we're having an episode coming up in the next couple of days that's going to go through goal setting and how you should be setting goals. But I want you to look at these goals every single day. So you are actually going to physically write down your goals. I want you to write them down on a piece of paper and you're going to review these goals every single day. Put them on your bathroom mirror. Put them on your desk so that you can see them every single day. Put them in a place on your phone where when you wake up, maybe the notification or your alarm every single morning shows your goals every single day so that you can review them daily. Studies have shown you are 30 33% more likely to achieve that goal if it is written down. Just that one step alone. 33% more likely if you actually write down your goal. So this is why we're writing it down up front. Making sure that you write down your goal is going to be a huge, huge factor. Now, you can write as many goals as you want, but writing down your goals means absolutely nothing. What we have to do is create actionable steps that you can go and do day in, day out, or week in, week out, or month in, month out, so that you can do this over time. Goals are for suckers, habits are for winners. So when we write down these goals, the, the overarching theme is going to be that we want to figure out how to write down these goals, but take action on these goals. So we have to plan this entire thing out. So we as humans, we need processes, we need steps. And so what we have to do is instead of just relying on our willpower, we want to make sure that we have a plan going into this so that we can create these habits. Your willpower is fleeting. It is not something that you're gonna be able to rely on long-term. This is why we always talk about automating your money, which we'll talk about in a second. And this is also why we think you need to remove your willpower from the equation and be create discipline within some of these things. So I want you to write down your goals in this way. 
First, I want you to have your big goal for the year. One big goal, the giant goal that you really want to accomplish. Then I want you to take that goal. I want you to break it down into yearly, monthly, weekly, and daily action steps that you need to take. Because what this is going to do is it's going to allow you to achieve this goal. So say, for example, you want to save $12,000 this year. And if you want to save $12,000 this year, that means that you need to break it down into monthly chunks. Well, I need to save $1,000 per month in order to save up that $12,000 this year. Well, what do I need to do quarterly? Well, quarterly, I need to save $3,000. So maybe you have something like income that is not consistent every single month. So you can break it down into those quarterly goals. Then you're going to break it down into monthly goals. Then you go to that daily goal. And what is that daily goal over that time frame? You could break it down. Hey, if I need to save X amount of dollars every single day to get to this goal, it is going to, then I need to go ahead and do that. And breaking it down into small chunks makes it so much more attainable for a lot of people. And for a lot of folks, that is one of the best ways to go through this. What you really need to focus on is six inches in front of you. And to achieve goals, and I believe this in everything from accomplishing things in business to accomplishing things in your life, you need to focus on what is six inches in front of me. Not as what is one mile away from me. What is six inches in front of me? You need to break down your goals into these small actionable chunks that you can take daily action on so that you just wake up every morning and know what you need to do. Boom. All of a sudden, guess what that is? That is a habit. If you know every single morning, I just need to go into the gym and work out every single morning, that is a habit. If you know every single morning, I want to improve my skincare, for example. Every single morning, I need to wake up and moisturize and put on whatever products I need to put on, put on sunscreen on my face. Every single morning, those are the actual takes you need to actionable steps you need to take in order to improve that. All of these things that mean you need to make these small actionable steps. Now, outside of this, most people will stop there and say, hey, that's how you set your goals. No, we're going one step further, my friends. Then you need to put it on your schedule. You need to put it in your calendar and block it out on your schedule so that you actually take these action steps. When we have that goal setting episode, we're going to really, really dive deep into this and, and go even further on that. So really, really excited for that. Uh, wait, can't wait for you guys to hear that episode. Make sure you're subscribed to this podcast so that you can catch that episode because we're going to dive even deeper and we're going to go through, hey, what's your perfect day? What does that look like? How do we create that day for you? based on your goals. So we're going to talk through that in that episode. The next one, we are going to be talking about automation here. And automation has been added in for this year. I want you to, if you've never automated your money, I want you to try to automate one thing per week. And one thing per week may be just very, very simple stuff. Maybe for the first week, you go in and you decide, hey, I'm going to automate my bill pay. I've been paying my bills, just trying to remember the dates of when they're due, or I'm relying on my Gmail to tell me when my bills are due. Then I'll go in there and I'll pay my bills. Well, instead, you could automatically pay your bills every single month. Make sure you have the cash on hand, but you can automatically pay those bills every single month. Maybe you want to automate your savings and you want to save more money. Well, you're going to go in there one week and you're just going to go to your savings account and start to automatically contribute money to that savings account if you're saving up for a brand new car or a wedding or a new house, down payment. All of these different things are great goals to have. Maybe it's your emergency fund and saving money into that as well. Maybe it's automating your investments. So maybe in 2024, you want to invest more money. You feel like you didn't invest enough money last year. I want you to go in there and I want you to automate those investments. So you can go into your brokerage account and you can look for a place where you just say automatic transfers and you can automatically transfer money into those accounts every single month. That's exactly how I do it. And your 401k, think about it this way. Your 401k, if you have one or if you have something along those lines, your 401k is already automated. It is automatically contributing money into your 401k every single month. That's probably the account for you that is growing the most because it's taking your willpower out of the equation and it's automatically contributing. It's also probably the account that's most consistent for you. So automation trumps everything when it comes to your money, which is why we're so passionate about automation here and why you're going to hear a lot more about automation in 2024. Next, you can automate your debt pay down. So say, for example, you want to pay down that mortgage a little faster. What if you change your mortgage payments to biweekly payments? That means if you change those payments to biweekly payments and you automate this process so that you're not even thinking about it, then you're going to be able to make an extra payment every single year. Well, that's going to cut years off of your mortgage by the end of it if you're going to stay in that house over the course of 30 years. And so this is something you definitely, definitely want to be doing. Also, your net worth. You can automate your net worth. 
Make sure you're doing that through something like Empower, for example, is a great app to do that. That's free. And then automating your spending and understanding what your spending habits are and making this automatic so it's easier for you. So these are all different areas that you can look at over this 75 day challenge. If you've already automated some of these things, then just look at the ones that you haven't done yet. And if you only need to automate a couple more, then maybe you do one a month or one every couple weeks. But if you've never done it before, do one every single week because this is a easy, easy way to have huge wins when it comes to your money. The next one is to create a spending plan, which is another fancy name for budget, honestly. And everybody's like rebranding the spending plan now because everybody hates the word budget. But really, you need to have a spending plan in place. So there are two budgets that I like to talk about on this podcast if you have never tracked your spending before. Now, A, one amazing thing about automation, which will, which is what we just talked about, is automation will actually kind of remove the budget out of your life. And that's kind of what the reverse budget does. So if you've never heard of a reverse budget, it's where you save off the top when you get paid and then you spend what is left over. Now, the sarcastic people on TikTok or Instagram would come back at me and say, well, then I can't pay my bills. And that's not what I mean by that. What I mean by that is first, you pay yourself first. You pay yourself prior to spending some of your discretionary spending. So when your paycheck comes in, you probably know how much you need to have on hand in order to pay your bills. And outside of that, you're going to save that money first. So your paycheck, boom, is going to hit your account, and you're going to save that money, put it to the side, or invest those dollars. What I mean by savings is either save in your emergency fund or and put it in your investment account. And so saving that money and paying yourself first is the number one thing you want to do with your money. And so I want you to think through this when you do the reverse budget, then you can spend whatever is left over, you can go ahead and spend that. This removes a requirement of you having to go into spreadsheets or some sort of fancy budgeting app and having to go in there and track your spending very, very closely. Now, it is much more optimal to use a spreadsheet or use one of those budgeting apps because you will have more money at the end of the month. You're going to think, ah, I'm not going to have more money at the end of the month. You will. It is an optimal way to budget. But a lot of people will not budget. They just will not do it. And so this is a way for you to actually remove that from, your, from the equation. You can remove all that willpower and all that extra stuff you have to do when you beat yourself up because you didn't stick to your budget. So this is a way to stick to a budget without having to do that. The second way is obviously by using something like Monarch Money, for example, which is a great app that shows you how to budget. You can use YNAB, which is another great tool to budget. Uh, you can use things like Rocket Money or all these other different tools that are out there. There are so many different things. Mint is gone, but everything else is still here. And so you can go ahead and, and pick what budget actually works for you. But I like zero-based budgeting. What that means is that every time you get paid, every single dollar goes somewhere, as YNAB calls it. Every single dollar gets a job. And so as your money comes in, you're going to allocate those dollars to a specific category. So you get paid and you know the mortgage payment is coming up. You need to allocate a certain percentage of that paycheck towards your mortgage payment. And all the way down, your paycheck should go down to zero because you put those dollars somewhere. And it could be for investments. It could be for emergency fund. It could be for utilities. It could be for your kids' clothes. It could be for vacations. It could be for whatever you want it to be. But that money needs to go somewhere. It does not need to just commingle in your checking account because that is how you get lost with your money. Freedom with money is when you tell your money what to do. And so telling your money what to do is why we create these spending plans or these budgets so that we can tell our money what to do. People think budgets are restrictive. They're absolutely not restrictive. This is power. Having power with your money and telling it what to do instead of you just spending money frivolously and then getting to the end of the month and be like, where the heck did my money go? This is the way, my friends. And so I want you to learn how to do this so that you can give every single dollar a job. Make sure you look at those true expenses and roll with the punches. If you make a mistake, I've never had a perfect month in my entire life with a budget. Your boy's got those Amazon boxes sitting at his front door right now. I bought way too much takeout food in the last week. We're never going to have a perfect month with our budget, and you will not either. So why, when you get a budget, are you beating yourself up over this stuff? Please, for the love of all things that we are talking about here, do not, and I repeat, do not beat yourself up because you had a bad month spending. Instead, we're going to roll with the punches, and we're going to move on to the next month. We're going to focus on the things we can control, and we're going to learn from that mistake. And guess what? We're going to make another mistake the next month. And guess what's going to happen? We're going to make another mistake the third month. And this is going to happen for the rest of your life. But guess what? It's A-OK -okay because we all... 
do it. So please do not beat yourself up. Learn to forgive yourself. Learn to roll with the punches. Stuff's going to happen in life. I had 45 things happen in my house within the last three months. It is really, really frustrating. But guess what? It happens to everybody. So let's move on and get to where we can forgive ourselves. So those are the two budgets that I would think through is reverse budget and or some sort of spending plan. The next one is I want you to track your net worth. Now, if you've never gotten into the habit of tracking your net worth, this is going to be fantastic for you because this is going to allow you to set up some way to track your net worth. Now, you can use something like a spreadsheet. Uh, spreadsheets are a little clunky because you got to get in there and you got to update it. And like I said, I really don't want you to have to rely on your willpower for any of this stuff. We're trying to remove willpower from your life. Instead, I use a tool um, that used to be called personal capital. It is now called Empower. And this tool is a fantastic tool overall for tracking your net worth because it's all automated. So you connect your accounts to it. You connect all your investment accounts. You can connect your uh, bank accounts. You can connect your debt to it also. And it will tell you what your net worth is. And then you can uh, put in your house value or whatever else you want, your assessed value of your house, uh, if that's something you're into. And then uh, you can put in your, you know, your house value. You can even put in like your vehicles, jewelry, that kind of thing too. Uh, and it is my, by far, I think, still the best net worth tracker. I've been using it for over a decade now. Um, and so Empower is a really, really cool tool. And you can track your progress on one dashboard. So it's going to show you over time, hey, here's your net worth growth. And you can go back as far as you want to with this um, as long as you have the data there and go track your net worth. So your net worth, if you don't know what that is, it is your assets minus your liability. So what is an asset? An asset is things like your investment accounts, cash on hand, gold, Bitcoin, rental properties that have equity in them, your personal residence that has equity in it. Even things like cars, which I don't track cars in my net worth just because they're depreciating assets, but they are assets. Uh, even things like cars, what the car value is, you can track things like gold, silver, jewelry, that kind of stuff. I don't do any of that stuff. I make it simple. It's usually my investment accounts. If I have rental properties, it's those types of things with the equity in there. And, and then you subtract it from your liability. So your liabilities would be any debt that you have. So your mortgage, how what your mortgage balance is, that's going to be subtracted from your net worth. Whatever debts you have, if you have credit card debt, or if you have a HELOC, or if you have a personal loan, or if you have buy now, pay later, all of those debts are going to subtract from your net worth. Student loans is another big one. All of those will subtract. And then the final number that you get there, is your actual net worth. So some of you may run and do this exercise and you have a negative net worth and that's okay. A lot of people start with a negative net worth. What we are doing with the 75 day challenge is we're identifying that you have that negative net worth. Now, what are we gonna do about it? Focus on the things that you control. What are we gonna do about this negative net worth so that we can get this thing positive and then watch it grow over time? Now, there is a bunch of reasons why you should track your net worth. Number one is it is a great indication of your overall financial health. This is by far the way to see what your overall financial health is. This is the scorecard. This is your money scorecard in the game of money. And so you want to make sure that you have, are tracking this so you know what it is. It is a more important measurement than income, in my opinion, meaning that your net worth should be growing over time. And if your net worth is growing over time, that's going to take you uh, in a great place in terms of financial independence if you want to take it there. It also provides a measurement of your progress. Like we said, Empower has that dashboard, which we'll link Empower up down below in the show notes uh, so that you guys can check that out. And if you use that link, thank you so much. That just helps support the show as well if you use that Empower link. But in this process, if you actually uh, you know, measure your progress through something like Empower, it's going to, you're going to be able to see your progress over time. Really cool stuff. It's motivating to see that. It really does, especially for me at least, it motivates me big time uh, when I can see that growth. Also, Results in better use of your money. You can be like, hey, am I going to go buy this $60,000 truck or am I going to go buy this $60,000 Yukon and I'm going to haul the kids around for two miles a day when I drive them to school? Or maybe I'll just get a little more modest and not add $60,000 of debt to my net worth and reduce my net worth $60,000. You'll see the daunting impact of stuff like that. And so your net worth is going to show you and really help you make much better decisions than you would if you didn't track your net worth whatsoever. And then it shows the true impact of your financial decisions, meaning that, hey, maybe you want to put a pool in the backyard and you want to grab something like a personal loan to put that pool in the backyard. Well, if your net worth is $60,000 and you want to put that pool in the backyard and it's like $120,000 to put that pool in your backyard, well, guess what? You just took your net worth from a positive to a big negative. And so this is something where it's going to really, really help you make and see the true impact of your financial decisions. And if you're a visual, 
it'll show your visual progress over time, which is very, very, very helpful. The next one is to read 10 pages a day of a personal finance book. Now, if you've read a bunch of different personal finance books and you think you got a grasp on it, use a business book. And this is how the original 75 hard uh, did this was they have 10 pages a day that you're going to read. If you can read more, if you can change your personal goal to 20, do 20 pages a day. If you think you want to read a book per week, take the number of pages in that book per week and divide that number by seven. Boom. That's how many pages you read every single day. Very simple stuff here, but start to read more. And I want the minimum to be 10 pages, but if you can do more, that's absolutely fantastic. Now you're like, hey, I don't know what books to read. I'm new to this stuff. I have no idea what to read. Well, guess what, my friends? Do I've got a deal for you that's absolutely free. So we have a newsletter called the Master Money Newsletter that we put out every single Thursday. And in that newsletter, we have what is called the High Performance Book Club. And the High Performance Book Club has a lot of personal finance books in it. In addition, it has some fantastic business books and personal growth books that's going to help you kind of through life. And it's the book I'm reading every single week, typically. A lot of times I'm either listening to an audiobook and reading a book every single week, but it's one of the main ones that I'm reading each and every single week. And so this is a great way to kind of see, hey, what is Andrew reading this week? What are some good books that he may recommend? And the ones I recommend, I typically put on that list. So subscribe to the Master Money Newsletter, and you will see all of the High Performance Book Club links. When you're on the newsletter, when you see the next one come out each and every single Thursday, I give you a little link there that shows you uh, where all of our book recommendations are that, are that have been in the past. And so we have dozens and dozens of them on there now. Uh, so you can see what I've read in the past, and you can pick out some of the books that may suit what you're looking to improve on. And so that's another big one. This is the wise portion of the healthy, wealthy, and wise equation that we try to come up with with a 75-day challenge. This is the one that I definitely think uh, you will get much wiser, and you need to build this habit into your day. Readers are leaders is the corny statement that people always say, but guess what? Rich Habits did a study, but guess what? The book Rich Habits, not the podcast, the book Rich Habits did a study, and that study said, hey, they went and looked at a bunch of millionaires and a bunch of really wealthy people and a bunch of people who were really, really rich. And they said, what are the commonalities with him? And one of the commonalities was that they read 30 minutes of a nonfiction book every single day. And so that's the minimum. They said the average CEO reads 55 books per year. If you want to be a high-performing person, you need to read more. Warren Buffett reads 500 pages a day. So did Charlie Munger. That is why one of the reasons why they think that they are living so long or they lived so long, that's one of the reasons why they think Charlie lived so long and why Warren Buffett is still living so long is because they're using their mind and they're reading more. Reading will change your life, but you have to actually do it. The next one is one workout every single day. Now, you know, your boy is into health and your boy is into fitness. And I've been doing this for a long time. I've been lifting weights since I was 18 years old. I'm in my thirties now. And this is one where it is really, really important to me. I built a really expensive home gym in my house. I have all these different things where I really, really care about this stuff. And I think that when you do something like this on these challenges, a lot of folks are going to try to get into fitness and try to do a bunch of different things. Um, and so I want you to actually make sure that you understand that health is wealth. And so getting that one workout in per day, maybe you already do this, so this is going to be easy. If you don't do this, this may be the hard part for you. And so making sure that you get that one workout in every single day, it's going to increase your productivity. So you're going to make more money. It's going to increase your sleep. It's going to decrease your stress. So you're going to be less stressed or less uptight at work. It is going to help you make better money decisions because you have that decreased stress. It's going to allow you to get an edge when it comes to being in the corporate place. People who work out in the morning, for example, if you go work out in the morning, you're not going to have as much stress. You obviously, we'll still have stress, but you're not going to have as much stress, and so you're going to be able to perform better overall. It is The benefits never, never end when it comes to this, so making sure you understand that is, is going to be really, really important. All right, the next one is to target your next step in the stairway to wealth and try to accomplish that. Now, if you've never seen the stairway to wealth, it is kind of our system for what do I do next with my money? If you're asking yourself that question, like, what do I do first? What do I do second? What do I do third? Well, this is kind of telling you what I think you should do with your money over that time frame. And it's inspired by a bunch of different people from the Money Guy Show to Ramit Sethi to... Dave Ramsey's Baby Steps, all of these are amazing, amazing tools. So you can check those out also. If you download the Stairway to Wealth printable that we have, we will give those guys all, all those folks a shout out uh, in that Stairway to Wealth, and you'll see like their, their different versions of it. 
you'll see there are different versions and there's some some cool stuff there but we're talking about the stairway to wealth where we have different levels that you can look on so we have rung one for example which is to build up just a small cash buffer a small fund so that you can make sure that you are protecting your wealth as you start to do some of these steps and then getting your 401k match and then paying off your high interest debt so this is stuff like credit cards this is stuff like this is stuff like credit cards or personal loans or any debt that's above a six percent interest rate we really want you to get that down uh, as low as possible. And it's also fully funding a six month emergency fund. I think your emergency fund should be six months. And so making sure you do those things, that is rung one. That is kind of the lever that I want you, to, that is flight one. And that is kind of where a lot of people need to get started. Then flight two is looking at things like investing in your Roth or your HSA. So all of you will be at this flight uh, when you start the year off and maxing those out and then maxing out pre-tax retirement accounts and then looking at things like, uh, or real estate, and then looking at things like wealth accelerators and then prepaying you know, long-term expenses and then low interest debts. That'd be part of flight two and also flight three. So if you're interested in the Stairway to Wealth, we have the recent episode that just came out talking about the new version of Stairway to Wealth, the 3.0. But in addition, we also have a PDF that you can download uh, and make sure you check that out. It's going to be in the show notes below that you can download that Stairway to Wealth. So you can say, hey, you can read through this, look at it and see what we're talking about here um, so that you understand how all of this works. Now, the next step is if you're looking for something that's going to help you overall in terms of saving a little more or investing a little more, maybe you want to get a, a little extra edge uh, this time around, then using a tool like Acorns, for example, where it kind of just rounds that money up so you can start investing those hours. I think these tools are really, really fun and they're really cool um, because it just helps you just invest that a little bit more. You could probably get to the end of your, end of your uh, you could probably get to, you know, over the course of 30 years where you could have, you know, tens of thousands of dollars extra in your account just by utilizing one of these apps, which is why I always add this on the 75 day challenge. I really don't talk about these a ton because they're small apples in the course of like the big ticket items that we really like to talk about in the show. But I think stuff like using acorns as a rounding tool to invest is, is really, really important. So say for example, you go out and you like buy groceries or anything like that. And your grocery bill is $200 and 25 cents. Well, it's going to round it up to $201 and it's going to take 75 cents and it's going to invest that for you. And so this is just a cool way to take your extra spare change and invest those dollars over time so that you can have more money and boost that savings rate. So it is, it is a great little tool. I love that investing spare change thought process. I think that is a, a really neat thing for a lot of people just to hack your brain. You're just looking for these little hacks so that all of it's going to make a big difference in the long run. So Overall, that's another great one, and that is the last piece of the challenge. So first of all, I want to hear what you guys think about this year's 75-day challenge. Let me know via email or shoot me a DM, and let me know what you think about this year's 75-day challenge. Uh, in the future, if you want me to add anything to the 75-day challenge, I would also love to hear that from you. And in addition, um, if you take the 75-day challenge, you will also get a discount uh, code for Index Fund Pro. There's a special one for the 75-day challenge members. So if you're interested and never have like, learned how to invest, this is our Investing for Beginners course uh, that will teach you exactly how to invest. Also, if you're looking for any other resources out there, mastermoney.co slash resources has a ton of free resources for you. So you can learn how to invest your money, manage your money, make more money, and save more money. So all of those things are there. If you go to mastermoney.co slash resources, you'll see it there. So thank you guys so much for listening to this episode. And thank you for investing in yourself, because that is exactly what you're doing when you listen to this podcast. And as we progress into the new year, and as we get to the new year, really, really excited to see what you all do this year. You guys made amazing progress over the course of the last year. All of you wealth builders made some amazing progress as we went through this. And so if you want to become a wealth builder, you just need to take that first step. And what is that first step? You can utilize something like the Stairway to Wealth to see what that next step is for you. Again, thank you so much for listening to this episode. And I am so excited to see the results. Let's get on this 75 day challenge together. Shoot me some messages on social media and show me your day one progress. Show me your progress throughout the day. I will repost post it all day long on Insta or anywhere else. So let me know how your progress is going and we will be reposting those as well. Thank you guys again for listening to this episode and we will see you on the next episode.